a second year marked by a big forward step. President of the board, Adrian Falk, calls a special meeting to order and introduces general manager B.R. Stokes. It was on this site, Stokes says, that barely a year ago, the President of the United States officially broke ground to launch construction of the Bay Area Rapid Transit System. Now the directors, press, and guests will get a first look at the full-scale model of the design car. Of the system that we are today unveiling the model of the car that will, we hope, epitomize more than anything else the whole philosophy of the project that we're embarked on. And that philosophy is that the Bay Area residents, given a choice, will choose to ride on rapid transit in luxurious, air-conditioned, 80 mile an hour comfort, rather than drive to work in their cars day after day on the crowded freeways. The ribbon is cut. And the cover removed. Your comfort, your safety, and your convenience were first considerations in designing this car. Seats are wide and softly cushioned. Floor is carpeted. Vista windows have been treated to resist heat and glare. This is a full-scale model of the broad gauge, lightweight electric car that will travel the 75-mile interurban system linking Alameda, Contra Costa, and San Francisco counties. See what we got here. Oh, they're here. Hey, come on in and sit down for a while. And they're momentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. Look at the carpet. The seat is really comfortable. Here, sit down and relax. Very fine. Very nice. Lovely one, two, three. color. This is the public address system, which the attendant will use to call oh, out the station. Like sofa. Did you see this adjustable reading light? Sort of like a jet. Only it seems more roomy in here. No straps, huh? No, no. no, no. In the rear half of the car. So that you will board this car in a few years, the testing of new engineering concepts is moving along, too technical studies of every phase of operation, providing the best ride possible. One phase is centralized, automatic train controls, which were installed at Diablo Test Track by four major companies. BART laboratory cars are dispatched by computers, which have been programmed to simulate actual operating conditions of the high-speed trains. These box-like laboratory cars are designed for testing only and bear no physical resemblance to the sleek modern car you will ride. When the final control system is adopted by the district engineers, it may combine the best features of all those tested. That automatic system must meet very exacting standards for Bay Area riders. Your train will be stopped within one foot of a given spot. Opening and closing of doors, starting, gaining speed and stopping will be automatic operations. Above all, the controls must operate on fail-safe principles under all conditions. Because BART will be the first new rapid transit program to be built in this country in 50 years, many of the advanced space-age concepts being developed at the Diablo test track are supported by federal funds. Your Bay Area system will become the model for rapid transit throughout the United States. Now, what is BART doing specifically as it moves along to the day when you will first board this car? These completed aerial structures in Contra Costa County are an example of the 31 miles of aerials planned for the system. The same structures in Albany, nearly completed, will be part of the first East Bay line to operate. Because a new transit system calls for more than the solving of technical problems, a distinguished Bay Area architect, Don Emmons, was retained as principal design consultant. He is convinced that rapid transit to compete with the automobile must be fast, efficient, convenient, attractive, and comfortable. But most important to you, Emmons has said that the system 
must enliven the commuter's spirits and not be the twice daily nightmare that most existing transit offers. Architects are involved in every phase of BART design. Emmons comments on one segment. Uh, these aerial structures that you see here under construction in uncompleted form are one of the major design elements in the entire rapid transit system. Uh, the speeds on this system are much greater than normal rapid transit trains are ever operated uh, at 80 miles an hour, which is quite unique. Now, the design that was ultimately selected was selected because of its simplicity and its elegant qualities uh, that was something that you could live with for a long time. Uh, any more intricate design uh, would have uh, become dated over a long period of time, and we do have to live with and see these structures for 50 to 100 years. And we want them to seem as handsome to our children and their children as, they, as we hope they do to us. Well, the construction of these piers that you see here is both ingenious and complicated and the same time very efficient. After many attempts and many studies to find the ideal form for these structures, the most economical, most efficient, proved to be the best, both from an appearance and cost standpoint, as is often the case, that the uh, ideal design uh, can often be the most economical and most efficient. Our basic concern through every phase of design is for the people who will ride the system and the people who live in the communities through which the system will pass. And this system can only be successful if it meets uh, the high standards that people expect from it. Finished structure that you see here is part of the test track uh, that was the first finished uh, aerial structure built to use as a test for all the various techniques involved in both uh, train control and train operation, as well as to uh, test the structure itself and to let everyone see how the finished product would look. The graceful aerials are not the only parts of your pioneering new system which will offer a specific solution to Bay Area traffic congestion and population growth. Station plazas and subway interiors have been handsomely designed by leading Bay Area architects for your convenience and enjoyment. Quick service and economy of operation are also first considerations in the testing of new devices for automatic fare collection. Now, while the first line is being readied for your use in just three years, actual construction on all other segments moves along. Early in 1966, a ceremony marked the beginning of the Trans Bay Underwater Tube, a twin bore tunnel which will connect the downtown subways. Precast steel sections will be lowered to a trough on the bay floor to complete the four mile long tube linking Oakland and San Francisco. The festive opening of actual construction on this vital link was preceded by three years of underwater soils testing and developing of engineering concepts and designs. The other equally monumental and time-consuming segment is the three-and-a-half-mile twin bore tunnel through the Berkeley Hills, providing a link between central Contra Costa stations and the rest of the system. Precast ribs are hauled into the tunnels which are progressing from both the Oakland and Orinda portals. Several years of testing and designing also preceded this slow daily grind of digging through a mountain. A daily grind that is also a hotly contested race between the two tunnels. Construction moves forward also on the first of the three city downtown subways. 
Here, near 8th and Fallon, the Alameda surface line will enter the Oakland subway. 18 miles of underground will be built in downtown Oakland, Berkeley, and San Francisco. Meanwhile, 